Hi, everybody. This is Robert Douglas, and this is the last episode of 2020 for Deploy Friday. Now, I was thinking a little bit about 2020 and what a year it's been. And for some of us, it's been very challenging with pandemics and whatnot. Especially the whatnot. But <laughs> one of the nice things for me that has come out of 2020 was that we initiated the Deploy Friday webcast. And it's something that I've looked forward to every Friday. So ending the year on a festive note with friends uh, talking about open source software and contribution, uh, that's got to be one of the highlights of 2020. So with that, I'd like to introduce my guests for today. I'm very happy to welcome Felicity Brand, who is a technical communicator and UX writer who lives in Melbourne. It's very early in Melbourne. So thank you, Felicity, for waking up early. No worries. And then we have Heather McNamee, who's product marketing at Open Source Open Strategy Partners. Uh, and Heather, you're hailing from Ireland, is that right? Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. Okay, the differentiation <laughs> makes all the difference. I, I understand <laughs> that. And Jeffrey McGuire, <laughs> who is the founding partner of Open Strategy Partners. So the, I, I see there's a pattern here. You all three have something in common. Who <laughs> hails from about 200 meters down the street from me at the moment? Hi, Jam. Hi. I, if this window were pointing the other direction, then we could wave at each other. Yep. <laughs> nice. Indeed. In, in, in fact, 200 meters while, is sufficiently social distance, right? While you're talking, I could run run a beer from the corner kiosk down to you <laughs> and back you? because I know. Anyway, we can do really we long talking, answers. <laughs> we're talking about something super exciting today, and uh, that is the uh, new book that the three of you have written called the uh, Typo 3 Guidebook. Woo. And for everybody who's watching out there uh, in the audience, uh, not only is there a link to the Amazon page where you can pre-order that book, which is about to come out, I think, on December 20th, I read, yep. but in the course of this episode, it will be my great honor to give away several copies of this book. How many copies you might ask, I'll get to that in a moment, to people who are watching and who want to get one of the first copies. So I say several, but it's gonna start at one. And how many books I give away is actually dependent on you and everybody out there. The more followers we get, for this webcast, the more books I'll give away. So come on, guys. This is us so bribing you to follow us. An integer of books. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, yeah. So for people who are watching the show during this and following and all of that, books will flow. It will be a tidal wave of books. The Typo 3 guidebook will circulate around the world if you follow our webcast. All right. <laughs> so let's get into it. I'm curious. Whom is this book for, and what is it about? If you guys don't know, we're in trouble. <laughs> Wait exactly. a minute. What podcast was this? Is this uh, Jam, do you want to I, take that one? No, in fact, I think that the Heather was the driving force behind the concept of the book, and Heather's also a qualified and experienced educator, and I would love to hear what she has to say about that. Okay. Um, so the challenge was set to us um, from the Type of Three Association to make a book that was an entry point for a mixed audience. And if you are involved in making learning material, that's a big challenge. Uh, certainly, everyone has different um, you know, previous experience and knowledge and trying to make something that suits people who come from a project management background, who are maybe business analysts, also developers, students as well. We talked to educators who want to use this in their classrooms. There's even a mentoring program to do outreach in other parts of the world. And so this is a really difficult uh, challenge so that the book is actually structured to address it. There is like a in two parts. One is the first part um, deals with these main concepts you need to know in the simplified um, web development workflow. And then the second half of the book, the second part is all guides. They're hands-on, practical, step-by-step. -step. And so someone who's maybe a product project manager could get something out of a guide, which is addressed to using Typo3 in a digital agency, they wouldn't be as interested in, you know, some of these um, integrator, practical kind of hands-on things. Um, but it's very visual. So even somebody 
who didn't need to do it step by step, they could understand the capabilities and possibilities. I hope that uh, explains it. Well, that was a, that was good for whom is the book for? It's for a diverse set of audience people who uh, developers, newbies, digital agencies, students. Um, and you had some troubles negotiating that or like that was a challenge, but you overcame it. Um, and what is it about? And Jam, you wanted to add something, but um, I, I, I still haven't got the answer. What is it about? Yeah, so the, the solution to the audience issue in the end, um, and with this concept of it being a guidebook, um, we played around uh, quite a bit with map metaphors and journey metaphors. And it's not that they're, it's not that we use that language or anything, but um, you could look at the book as a guide to starting from pretty much at scratch and in the end, having one or more websites and knowing how to build others. So the contents of the book um, covers basic topics for a variety of people to find their feet in them and then takes them through a series of exercises so that I can I even have the chapter list here somewhere. Um, and I don't know, oh, there it is. <clears throat> so the first half of the book is four chapters and the first is called Showroom and we talk about the community and the context and content management in general. Then we have a designing and planning chapter and that takes you through um, what do you have to think about when you're putting together a website? How can you get there best? Then building and extending a website. And that is when we really start to touch on Typo3 itself. Uh, we ended up having an ambition to make this relevant to people who want to communicate on the web and people who want to know about con content management in general. So there's a lot of information that that is above and beyond uh, one, you know, implementing code in a, in a given technology. And then the fourth chapter is about launching and maintaining a website over time. And um, those are fairly hefty guides there. Some of them are quite long. Um, and there's, a, there's a, a lot of really valuable information in there. And then the thing that I got incredibly fascinated by as um, Heather and some of the other people were designing the book is that the second half is 10 guides. And um, you know, it really goes from here's how you install it, here's how you turn on an extension, here's how you choose how to write an extension, really technical things, um, you know, with code and whatever. Um, and then practical things that, for the uh, integrators to create a members area, to create, uh, you know, password uh, restricted access to content, um, multilingual things. But then there's also debugging and tr troubleshooting as a chapter, which is not specific to Typo3, but it's sort of roughly PHP CMSs and where to look for things and best practices around that, and also how to um, use Typo3 CMS to make a su successful business. Are you looking for a uh, PHP-based or an open source technology? Are you Are looking for a CMS to complement some other offerings with your agency? Are you looking to build a career? There's this um, sort of we tried to look from as many perspectives as possible around this system and um, and come up with the with this journey from not knowing very much to being able to put together websites in a professional context, I think. Okay, so uh, you have the table of contents in front of you right now? Um, I do. Yeah. and I can't find I can't find the window with you in it, so I'll stay here. Okay, well, read us, read us through those 10 guides, because that kind of answers the question that I had in my, uh, in my mind. What would I learn or be able to do after reading this book? Uh, so what are the titles of those guides? Okay, everybody count on your fingers. Installing <laughs> Typo 3. Creating on the first your... page of guide book my... <laughs> <laughs> I installed Typo 3. Mm -hmm. And I installed Typo 3. In the second oh, chapter of the guidebook, <laughs> Heather wrote for me, creating your first site um, with time. <laughs> Very good. Um, I wasn't, I could actually, go on. I wasn't yeah. actually encouraging you to sing the whole thing. <laughs> he would, he could. <laughs> Extending typo three is the third guide. Planning, building, and using content elements, so structured uh, uh, semantic content. Um, is the fourth chapter. Create your first extension where we go into some real deep co uh, technical concepts around the Typo3 form engine, the table configuration array, plugins, modules, and so on. So that's that's pretty deep geeky stuff. Um, creating a members area in 
uh, in the front end of your website and how you how you build that out from the back end. Translating your site, so type of three multilingual capabilities. Configuring content management workflow and permissions, typo3 has some built-in and some popular extensions that allow for editorial uh, and approval workflows. So we talk about how to set that up. Um, and then guide nine is making typo3 successful for your business. And uh, we got contributions for all of the things that we wrote. And uh, it was really interesting that some people in that community came to us and, and offered to build, do this chapter, which is, which is, which is really, um, Different and Heather talks a lot uh, about how this is a holistic CMS book and 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 it feels a little bit different than other books that I've encountered. And the last guide is debugging and troubleshooting. So all um, talks a lot about security and about how to um, you know keep the thing running well. Cool, thank you. Um, so Felicity, I'd like to get to you because um, by now your morning coffee must have kicked in. Um, <laughs> yeah. I should have had a double shot. <laughs> right, I should have too. Um, still time for that. What was the process of writing this book uh, and, and structuring it? And uh, did it change a lot over time? Uh, you must have been involved with that from the beginning, right? I, I, I wasn't there at the birth, um, I, <laughs> but I came on quite soon afterward. Um, the structure did not change very much, and that's because um, of the way we work at OSP, at Open Strategy Partners. So we put a lot of effort into planning at the start, um, which really helps you when you're writing, um, you create a guide, you create a framework. And then someone like me can come on um, after the project has started and um, start putting those building blocks in place. Um, so uh, it, it was not hard, I would say, speaking personally, uh, to come in and start doing these writing tasks. So, you know, I, I came on board with Open Strategy Partners and Jam said, oh, and we're writing a book. Do you, do you want to have, a, why don't you help us, you know, write this book? And I'm thinking, oh, I've never written a book before, but um, it's just like any other writing task, really. So, um, Heather had done a lot of work to um, uh, kind of in, envision how it should be. And we had laid out that plan and um, I started with chapter four. And then, you know, like um, Heather's favorite metaphor, how do you eat an elephant? You uh, eat it one bite at a time. That's that's what we did. So, um, Jam, did you, did you just whisper that Star Wars yeah. also started at chapter four? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. A new hope, a new hope for Taco Three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean Felicity's background is also when we brought her in, we were looking for, for Felicity's skills in uh technical writing and documentation, and that's where you really excel. And the guides actually, the format of the guides are, we have a lot of strong opinions about this, you know, that uh, often instruction makes a lot of assumptions about someone's prior knowledge. It doesn't make it clear what the learning outcomes are for a particular tutorial. It was very important for us that each one of the guides um, is modular in that sense. It's very clear what prerequisites knowledge and uh, settings you would need to have so that you can get the most out of this. And also understanding is kind of a very Irish way in, in, to give directions. In fact, you tell somebody, go down this road, take a left, take a right. If you see that, you've gone too far, you're wrong, you have to turn back. And actually all the steps have those kinds of checkpoints. So like you just make sure at a certain point that you've you caught everybody. That comes as well from my experience in classroom training. Most people are okay, but some people will get completely get lost, and we don't we don't want people to have that experience with this book. That's why the, it's really the the guiding part of the book. But something that uh, something that I would like us to touch on, um, and I think you'll probably get there, Rob. But we we worked very much with the community, and another part of the context of this book is that um, every chapter, wherever we stop on that learning path, um, we give a lot of of links and pointers to say, go read this person's blog, go to the official documentation here, check out this other thing. So this this book is embedded in a context of a, of a software project that's well-documented and well-maintained. And we sort of created a, a new set of entryways into that world. Um, also, because for a 
very typical for a mature um, open source project. It's 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 pretty deep, and and um, you know there's a lot of technical detail that can be overwhelming for for uh, for newcomers. So we we tried to we tried to build this into the context, and we tried to build it with everybody who's been um, you know making and maintaining it all these years. Yeah, we really cool. couldn't have done it without the people we you know the subject matter experts we spoke to directly but the incredible documentation team and then people who just really even blog about type of three we tried to you know bring it closer into the book and really resonate back and reflect back to the community what what type I love of three that is inclusive attitude that you bring to this apropos inclusive attitude i would like to include everybody in the next service announcement which is i'm about to tweet uh, uh, tweet uh send out through the comments the link to win a free book so here you go uh follow that link there fill out the form and uh you will be eligible to win a free copy of the typo 3 guidebook we'll do the um the drawing after the show and we will give away a number of books that is at least equal to the number of new subscribers we get during the broadcast so go get your mom <laughs> have her sign on and <laughs> <laughs> like My mom's probably show. watching. I bet. So I'll ask mom, please. <laughs> Hello, Heather's mom. Press the subscribe button wherever it is. <laughs> so Felicity, free book. Felicity, you have a, a background in technical writing, which means that you're very accustomed to the task of approaching a technology that you've not personally used and then working with the subject matter experts on that technology and writing about it. And that's the process that you applied to this book, right? And, yes. and and Heather and Jam, I know because you and you worked with me at Acquia before get this gig. So I know you weren't doing typo three before that. So the three of you are kind of like all technical typo three noobs, right? Which is fine, but was uh, how did you overcome that as a hurdle? Like if if somebody asked me to write a typo three book right now, uh, it would be a very short book. <laughs> yes. The, um, you know, I think part of it comes with the territory, as you say. So as part of the role, um, I am accustomed to um, bridging that gap. But you're right. I mean, writing a book is a big deal. And writing a book about a piece of software that you're new to, you know, it, it cranks up that imposter syndrome to 11, really. Um, so... There was a bit of that, but I would say there was a combination of things that helped me overcome that. So um, firstly, um, we'd done a lot of, we, before I came on board, Heather <laughs> and other people had done a lot of interviews already with members from the community. So I could read and watch and listen to those interviews, which had a wealth of information in them. And secondly, I could just reach out at any time to members of the community and ask them questions. And thirdly, I installed Typo3 and played with it myself. So um, I, I guess those three things kind of came together and it, it immerses you in, in the product and um, you, you can feel like you can start to, um, you know, I wasn't really... Um, creating new words, I was kind of synthesizing the information that um, more expert people than I had had already um, articulated about the software and I could <clears throat> then present that into into something that, um, you know, is, is readable in book form, I suppose. Thank yeah. you. Now, you mentioned the Typo3 community and so did Jam and so did Heather. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I come from Drupal uh, community, let's say. That's my major open source background. So I have a, a bit of an idea. And in fact, I've interacted uh, quite frequently with the Typo3 community, always to great success and much fun. Um, Jam and I have sung for them on occasion. Um, Not so just we, this Christmas thing today either. No, in, in, indeed. Um, so uh, I, I've met the Typo3 community, at least part of it, in in in, in many uh, different occasions. But how would you uh, characterize this software project's community? Because it seems like that was a major resource to you in being able to write this book. Yeah. I would like to. I, we, we all have something to say about this. Right? Yeah, you yeah. all have something to say. First, you, <laughs> then you, and then you. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who was? Um, 
<laughs> I have a. I, I'll say the. I'll say the slick professional thing, and then I want to. I, I want to, um, especially want Felicity's um, perspective with a particular story in mind. But um, Typo three as a CMS is um, when you start looking at it, um, it's built so that it does a great deal of a typical agency client project out of the box. 80 or 90% of what you need for, for great client sites and great authoring experiences is just there for big information rich sites. Um, it's got some cool stuff built in, pretty much being decoupled its entire existence before decoupled was a thing. And um, so I, I like to call it a vibrant professional community. And it seems to me to be a a professional quality CMS built by professionals for professionals. And compared to our dear friends and colleagues, for example, in Drupal, where Drupal has a real uh, a history in activism and in hobbyists and in scientists and some, some really real interesting breadth in it, um, Typo3 seems to me to have always had a little more focus on a on a particular mission. Um, mm -hmm. And so it ends, it's a purpose-built, Fully featured system that that has some real strengths when it comes to these kind of these kind of really solid professional websites. At the same I, I, time, I, Felicity, oh. um, they're oh. <laughs> truly open source and truly friendly and truly helpful and welcoming. How many times did I tell you to call Michael Shams <laughs> to start hanging out in the community <laughs> before I convinced you to do it? <laughs> Yeah, I think Jam has a way that he likes to remember this story, so I'm not going to burst his bubble on that. Um, yeah, I, I'll tell it the way I think he wants me to tell it. Uh, so, yeah, I think, um, you know, you guys, you have to understand that I, I, I'm I, new to open source and I, I came to it with all this baggage of um, corporate life, you know. So um, when... So it, you know, we we it transpired that um, Michael Shams, Typo three expert, also lives in Melbourne, Australia. And also so a Typo three book author as well. He's yes, author. we are co-located, and um, yeah, Jem said you should reach out to Michael. Um, you should take him for lunch. You should go. And <laughs> I said I'd pay for that lunch, I think. Oh, you did. Yep, you did. You uh, so. <laughs> and I, yeah, I guess I dragged my feet a little because, um, uh, you know, it's like cold calling, really. Here I am, this kind of nobody, new to the community, going to, approaching an already um, published author um, to basically pick his brains about what it's like to write a book and, you know, tell me everything you know about Typo3. <laughs> um, yeah, and but I eventually did. We went, we met and we had coffee and um, now we're best buds. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we, he, he was very gracious. And yeah, we do chat quite often. So um, me and Shamsi go way back now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I want to just add as well, um, I think the type of three community is really uh, self-critical and, and always looking to improve things. I just recently, we we had somebody join our team and I was showing her type of three in the back end. And she, she said, it's lovely. It's really intuitive. And this is someone with a lot of WordPress experience. And um, I think the type of three community is pretty hard on themselves. I don't think, I think they, maybe the type of book, someone who, who was very in the type of three community would have written something a bit different. I think we could, um, especially coming from the Drupal background that I have, making learning material, the certification program, et cetera. I sort of have a different perspective in the about the software. I, exactly what Jam said is a much stronger opinion about what is in there. If you're watching this and you're a Drupal user, you may remember conversations about small core and like removing features out of um, out of the core system. And, and Typo3 is very different than that. It's much more additive. Um, if you're a WordPress user, you you may be bowled over by the many, many, many uh, WordPress plugins that are available in this complex market, um, subscription services and SLAs and all this kind of thing for different features. In Typo3, it's very different. You, you wouldn't look for an extension for things because it's already in core. So many things are there. So it's actually a lot less uh, typo three extensions and you know and it's not i don't think it's a benefit either to have to have more things in fact it's a, really a benefit for the typo three users to have a really 
strongly opinionated piece of software where people are, you know, sharing their common strengths. Another thing I want to mention about the Type of 3 community, which is very different from other open source projects, is there's effectively no BDFL. There's no benevolent dictator for life. There's no person whose like personality is so tightly wound up in the project that they can veto or sway the community. It's very democratic in that way. And some so of the Heather, what are you talking about? Who are you talking about? BDFL? A lot of open source projects are, you know, like the the babies <laughs> of certain, you know, of personalities. And it's not a criticism sure. at all of WordPress or Drupal. It's it's just a very personality led, you know. But in in the differences with Type of Three and the effect. I was going to say what Felicity recognized as well is that it was very easy to get access to the leadership in various teams. It's all publicly available on typo3.org. You can easily see who's responsible for what initiative and how to contact them. So it's it's, it's actually a very porous community. It's very easy yeah. to get into. A lot of, of open source projects are like, it's really hard to see who to talk to and how to get into something. Whereas the typo3 community is really ready to scale. Like they newcomers they have, can uh, absorbed in the right place where their skills match, you know, so they have a, they have some interesting traditions around um, governance and it, it's very democratic and mm. members of the, even individual members of the association can vote on budget spending every year. Um, mm. They want to enable contribution. So they, they, um, they make that possible uh, when people, you know, a lot of times when people need help, um, they want to make sure as many people uh, uh, can come and, and, and do things as possible. And, um, and yeah, they've, they've, they've actually, and I hadn't thought of that before, Heather, but they've really specialized mm -hmm. in governance as well. You know, they have mm -hmm. a lot of structures and they're quite transparent and they have, you know, people um, observing and making sure things are fair and, and people, you know, in certain positions for certain amounts of time. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. I think also Typo3 has something that I find really advantageous and non-obvious um, out of the box in terms of its open source-ness, there is a community of many, many people uh, working on it and using it. And then there are some specialist interest groups in there, um, <clears throat> like university practitioners and agencies and so on. Um, and at some point, the community uh, created a nonprofit association, which is very typical. And, um, you know, that has a, is a Swiss incorporated um, Nonprofit. There's a bunch of, of of really strict rules around budgeting and practices, and it's all it's all very very grown up. But a few years ago, some people thought, "Hey, um, we need a commercial company. We need uh, someone to represent us." Um, and the association founded a commercial company, which now fully self funds itself as a subsidiary of the association. Mm -hmm. And because Typo Three has a contributors agreement that one has to sign to contribute to the GPL. The, um, the G this sounds really technical, but the effect is brilliant. So the Typo3 GmbH, the commercial company, has the right to represent the project as its vendor. So, um, so other projects, uh, not all open source projects can have an official vendor, but Typo3 can go and bid on government contracts, bid on things where you have to have quote unquote official vendor support. And they have this commercial company set up and in its articles of incorporation, um, they're not allowed to compete with other businesses in the Typo3 space. And they're designed to, to provide um, services and products that enhance everyone's experience of it. So they offer official SLA based support and it's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it just, I think the life, the, even the type of three life cycle, they're always on time with their releases. And I think I'm not to throw WordPress or Drupal under the bus, but you know, they moved it to time-based releases in 2017. You know, when things are going to happen, you know, what's coming out. Um, and then you can get this extended long-term support. So effectively you're getting something like six years on any major version. And sometimes they've even extended that. So that's a, you know, we throw around the word enterprise, but what we really mean is longevity, you know, and reliability. And, um, you know, for the open web, I think it really matters. It really matters right now. And I think that's where Typo3 fits. So, um, yeah. I'm all for that message. Mm -hmm. So let's pause again and remind everybody who's watching that with this very link that I'm sending out right now, you could register your chance to win a copy of the Typo3 guidebook that these three people uh, have co-authored. Now, these three people have something in common that's been a little overlooked in this conversation, and that is the Open Strategy Partners part of your uh, LinkedIn profiles. Now, Jam, 
as the founding partner of uh, Open Strategy Partners, where are you sitting right now? Um, Friesenplatz in Cologne. In the Open Strategy Partners offices, right? Yes, Open Strategy Partners HQ. HQ, exactly. Um, so how, how did it come to be that uh, essentially uh, a, a, an open source marketing company, if I can call you that just as a convenience, um, ended up writing a book on behalf of the Typo3 community? So our self-identity is generally a strategic communications company. And um, part of the origin story is that of the roughly uh, 10 of us in the company now, uh, six or seven have really deep open source roots and backgrounds in Drupal and Typo3 and some other projects. And, and at least one of you is developing those roots as we talk. Uh, oh yeah, everybody is forced to, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> it's an open source roots hot house. Um, anyway, um, so our fundamental mission uh, it seems to be translating complexity to business value. So at a really a straightforward and relevant level for this conversation, a CMS is hard to sell. And a CMS like Typo3 might have five or six or 700 features. And to compete and sell against um, a proprietary system like Sitecore or Adobe um, Web Experience Manager, um, geeks traditionally think about features and tiny, tiny, tiny little beautiful details. And business people tend to think about broad strokes and big visions. And Adobe, broadly speaking, knows how to sell to those people and the geeks uh, and our, our dearest friends and colleagues don't. And so Open Strategy Partners um, produces strategic com communication that, that connects between complex technologies and business value and and in many different ways. And, and um, because we come from open source, then um, a lot of our clients are open source and we're having a, we're having a good time with it and it's nice. Um, the Typo3 Association and the Typo3 Company are both clients of ours, and we're deeply involved and embedded with the Typo3 community personally and professionally. I think um, all of us have volunteered. All of us also do client work for them, helping them write things and, and, and plan strategic uh, activities and so on. And at some point a few years ago, they approached us and they said, uh, you know, um, We've got this idea that our system is ready to get back out into the world, go beyond Central Europe again. Um, it's um, you know highly professionalized. We've got these regular release cycles. We've got all these very professional practices. Um, and we were talking through with them different ways we could support that. And it came out like, hey, you know, there hasn't been um, there hasn't been a book for beginners in a while. And um, you know, we have these some really great other things, but you know, that could, um, that could be a great marketing tool. And we, we thought, well, yes, it could. And so the association has a vision of having this to support mentorship, to support education, to, you know, attract more people to the project. And we had the privilege of being commissioned to do that. So um, we got to, you know, embed even further into the community and hang out with the community. And, and um, we talked with literally dozens of experts um, and and um, you know had official help from I think it's at least a dozen agencies and um, a bunch of events and so yeah we just had the privilege to really um, spend more time with these people and say hey you know what is it that you always wished you'd known that would have helped you or how would you approach this and then we could compare and contrast and and make a slightly opinionated version of of what we thought would be good for opening the doors to this really interesting project. Do you know of any other example of that being done where like a software association, you know, the nonprofit body behind a software has engaged ostensibly not subject matter experts, but communication experts to tell the story like that? Oh, no, I don't know if I've seen something exactly like that. Certainly, we we push to have a uh, Typo Three Association as the author of the book. In fact, just so everyone knows, the oh. any proceeds from the book are going back to the Typo Three Association. And the A Press was like, "Yeah, we've never done that before. You have to, you know, have people authors, not organizational authors." They had um, so, negotiating with us. Yeah, <laughs> even though the contract took a while to negotiate because they had never done. Um, 
this kind of book before, you know, usually a book is written by a passionate user, um, also experienced authors pick topics or they have, a, you know, strong expertise in a particular area. And often they're, you know, labors of love. <laughs> and this is really a labor of love on behalf of the Type of 3 Association. So I'd love to hear examples. I don't know if we'd seen anything exactly like it and our publisher hadn't. Well, if the audience knows of any examples yeah, or <laughs> has any questions or uh, any comments about this interesting structure, uh, please chime in. Uh, and we have the, um, the chat open for questions if you have questions for our panelists as well. Um, we, we kind of skidded by a point that, um, <laughs> okay, um, somebody with the username handle uh, Poggers, P-O-O-G-E-R-Z, <laughs> or is it Poogers? <laughs> Poogers? Poggers. Poggers, Poggers, Poggers. <laughs> I'm going to go with Poogers, uh, or it's po Poggers in German. Pogats. So they say that mustache is Poggers. Wait. Poggers says the mustache is Poggers? Yes, it's very it's very self-referential and that apparently directed to you since none of us has a mustache except you. Well, I'll take it as a compliment this time and I'll go look it up. Okay, we're going. I'll go Google Poggers. The mustache is Poggers. Okay, thank you. Podcast editor, please remove those last 20 seconds of dialogue from the podcast. Okay. Okay. Um, we skidded past a point that I thought was quite interesting, in fact. Uh, and that was uh, when we were talking about the Typo 3 community, some of the efforts that the community has made uh, to engage with other PHP projects in 2020. Um, does somebody want to talk about that a little bit more? Because I, I, I thought that was uh, another sign of an interesting... I'm seeing a lot of signs from the Typo 3 community of a lot of thought on how to position the project and how to, you know, with the governance and, you know, engaging you to write the book and all of that to uh, really strategic thinking, okay? Really very uh, cunning strategic thinking on the leadership of the Typo 3 project. And engaging with other communities effectively is something that I've seen other CMS projects try to do and only maybe halfway succeed. So um, how did that go for Typo 3? Yeah, um, actually, it, Benny, who's a core maintainer, uh, has been involved with PHP FIG, creating um, the PHP standard recommendations, the PSRs, and I think has been one of these PHP projects that was an early adopter. But in fact, just this year, they've joined officially as a member. Although in that group, you don't need to have membership to participate. Um, but when someone, you know, in terms of the developer experience, if you have experience with Symfony, if you have experience with, you know, standard practices, you're going to see a very familiar uh, developer experience. And that's improved a lot because of all the work that um, uh, people have done to to make Typo3 relevant with those standards. And um, another nice thing that's just happened in the last week is that as a result of Typo 3's funding contributors, they literally pay for people's travel and they literally pay for people's accommodation. That lowers the barrier for participation, which is fantastic. That's good but because when people when people figuratively pay for my expenses, I get really mad. <laughs> I know. But it's really funny because like it, it's it's such a it <laughs> raises so many barriers to participation. Like if you can't afford to 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 join in these events, you miss being a part of it. And so I, I was amazed to see that. Um, but then of course their expenses are really low because of the pandemic. And mm -hmm. they had this surplus and they've donated it back to three projects. So that's PHP Unit, Symphony, and the Composer Project. It's just massive to be able to do that. And it really is because of that way the community structured. And we, of course there were a lot of open source projects st struggled because they would do a lot of revenue would come in big events. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a. It was a, there were some there were significant contributions, and from the position of we rely on these projects, let's make sure they stay healthy, and we are lucky that our way of running our project was um, uh, gave us r crazy problems like good problems to have this year. So let's make sure that we pay it forward and and keep our friends and colleagues uh, going. Cool. Now, of the three of you, how many of you are first-time book authors? Please raise your hand. 
<laughs> and for the podcast audience, that's jam and felicity. Heather has kept her hand concealed. So I take it, Heather, you've written other books? And brochures not, before. Like I worked in a book publishing um, not for profit, but the totally oh, so, so this is like another book. Another day, another <laughs> book. Yeah, yeah. She was like that the whole time. <laughs> so Felicity and Jam, uh, you're you're on the cusp of uh, having that printed tome in your hands. And, and and stroking its cover. What what but it's not even supposed to come out until December 20th, and you're showing me a copy. <laughs> <laughs> so Jam has apparently printed the uh cover image out and is holding it in his hands and stroking it in anticipation of the uh great feeling of having accomplished something as great as writing a book because it is in fact an enormous amount of work. And uh um, as you know, Rob, having written the first Drupal book there ever was. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I really enjoyed Nobody that moment. It. It's so out of date now. Nobody <laughs> go buy my book. I don't, I don't even think there are copies left. That's true, <laughs> yes. Um, so Felicity, are you are you looking forward to that moment? I it, Look, I, I think it's really interesting that um, you ask because I have been, you know, we've been doing um, some promo activities around the book and and I have had a little bit of a cringe factor about it because, you know, I thought I wasn't proud of it. Um, and I thought, you know, that's a really odd feeling to have. I, I need to kind of investigate those feelings, you know. And so I, I reflected and I thought, no, we really did achieve something. We've written a book. It's a, it's a big task to have accomplished. So why do I feel so, you know, icky? And then I thought... I realized that I just, I want eight to 10 more months. I, like I could make it really good. You know, we, we just need to, um, we just need another year and, you know, this baby would be fantastic. So, you know, I understand that obviously um, you need to draw the line somewhere. And I, um, I think that we have created this book and it's great, but I, I have been reluctant to, shout about it because I just I can see everything that I would want to improve you know I guess you are your own harshest critic so yeah I think I think the second edition is just going to um really <laughs> take it to the next level <laughs> <laughs> so Felicity, I take it from this um, um, somewhat self-deprecating uh, promotion of the book uh, <laughs> that you are a perfectionist, maybe. <laughs> and uh, you, look, I... <laughs> you have I, heard the would... adage that perfect is the enemy of done, right? <laughs> yes, yes, you're right. You're right. I, yeah, I, I think. Mm, let you know, me let me vision. let me interrupt you for a moment. <laughs> yeah, please, please. Let me interrupt you for a moment and <laughs> explain to you some of the things that happened to me when I had the physical copy of my first book in my hands. And by the way, I also had all of those feelings that you just expressed. Like you spend so much time creating a vision for what you want to give the world in your writing. And then the realities of, uh, you know, the 24 hours in the day and pandemic and real life and having to learn all the stuff and the editorial process, which nobody tells you is as hard as it is. And it's hard. It's like twice as long as the authoring process for some inexplicable reason. And maybe A Press still uses those god awful uh, uh, Microsoft Word format um, <laughs> templates. In which case, I'm really sorry, A Press. That's really not cool. They, but they they sent <laughs> us those, and then we said, "Hey, so we're going to work in Google Docs. Hope that's okay with you." And they're like, "Oh, we do that too now." So actually, progress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Felicity, I understand what you mean, but. When I got that physical book in my hand, the first thing I did, I sent it to my parents. They were thrilled. But a couple weeks later on the phone, my dad did admit, you know, I tried to read your book. I loved the foreword. <laughs> I think I thanked my parents. I loved the foreword, but I couldn't make it through the first chapter. <laughs> 
<laughs> Character development was real slow. So they, they 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 put the book on the shelf, right? Okay, and it was it was there next to like Tolstoy and <laughs> Dostoevsky and Robert Frost and whomever, right? A couple of years later, uh somebody in the family got married and the new husband came into the house and looked at the bookshelf and, and noticed the anomaly of a computer book on my parents' <laughs> shelves, pulled it out, decided to read it, and actually became the founder of the company that I worked work at now. Wow. The founder of the company that I work at now because yep. of the book that I wrote and that was sitting on my parents' shelves. So the, you cannot... <laughs> possibly guess the positive uh, uh, benefits of having materialized all this knowledge. You that is might, such a you butterfly wings predict. moment. That is right? such a butterfly wings moment. Exactly. Um, wow. wow. Yeah. That is a heartwarming story. Yeah, okay, <laughs> you've turned it around for me. Oh, that's what I do. I'm a turnaround guy. I'm a turnaround Rob. There we go. <laughs> New nickname. So, Open Strategy Partners. In case there are other open source projects or other communities of any kind, technical in nature maybe, who are also wondering how they're going to materialize and externalize and bring to life a guidebook or some other sort of publication about their software or project or whatever they do. Um, is this a model that you can repeat? Can you be brought in, interview the technical uh, subject matter experts, integrate with the communities, do interviews, bring everybody to the table, find a structure and write a book about it. Is this something you can actually repeat? Yeah, definitely. I mean, at its heart, a lot of what OSP does is try to um, bridge that gap between like a business mind and then the people who are building the products and creating communication. So it's, it's not just books, it's blog content or tutorials all, all across the board. But I think with a book, um, because you're creating such a monumental asset, not to raise it on a pedestal, but um, you have to think of that person who needs to understand the most important you know, the most important features and concepts. There's sort of like every system has these sort of like fundamental concepts you have to unlock be before you understand anything about it. And coming from other content management systems, um, Typo3 has a certain number of these little you know, concepts. You have to figure out what those are. And in order to do that, you have to talk to people who are using it. And then you have to talk to people who uh, you know, would like to learn it. Um, it's, it can be, I think, kind of, I think it's, it's sort of like you have to look at it with fresh eyes, but it's hard, right, if you know it really well. Every system has a kind of grain and you can work. We talk about this in the book. There's a system that has a grain to work with, especially content management systems that have some sort of front end. And if you don't understand how it works, you're working against it. You can cost yourself a lot of time, of money wasted trying to you know, shoehorn it. Whereas if you really understand how the system works and work within those constraints, you can get a lot out of it. And absolutely every system is like that, you know, um, whatever you're teaching, you have to kind of like unlock these key concepts and um, match to people's prior knowledge. It's, What's the I'm sure to say about that. <laughs> is there a process that you employ to unlock that and to discover the grain and work with it? I mean, it's not, I mean, how do you do that? A lot of interviews. <laughs> it's a lot of interviews. Um, sort of nice pattern matching you can do as well once you start to, just for example, we'd already writ written the book and finished it, it was ready to go. And then we were doing some interviews, uh, email interviews with people who run digital agencies, you know, work with the uh, GmbH. And we we're asking them like, what is it that makes projects run over time or over budget? And they were like, yeah, well, actually when our clients don't understand how Typo3 works, it costs so much time and energy. We have to spend a lot of time educating the customer. Don't wait to educate the customer when you're delivering your software. You know, don't wait to do some like end user training. You have to educate them much earlier. And uh, that just proved to me that we were in, we were going the right direction with uh, the way we were doing the book. It's like, what are those things that people need to understand to get the most out of it? So the like the first chapter, the showcase um, in the showroom, sorry, is like what's possible? And the second one is like designing questions. It's like, how do you solve a problem with this? Um, and then yeah, I actually, 
I really yeah. love that chapter because it talks about thinking between, like the gap between I have an organization and some information and I know that I want people to know it, but, and here's the internet, what do I do? Like it's a, it, we, we talk about that process in, 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 in there and it's pretty, it's pretty, I found that one really interesting to work on. Yeah, a lot of the stuff for for people who know it well, it's so obvious. Like the, the, who would talk about the tr you know the tree structure, but as a newcomer, it's the most important thing you need to know, and it's it unlocks a lot. Sorry, Felicity, to, to cross. I, I was just going to add on to that. You know, I think about the difficult third chapter, um, and I think we we wrote that last. It had it's got real um, meaty concepts in it, and we went through a few iterations of how to structure that chapter because we needed to talk about TypeScript. We needed to talk about Fluid. And you kind of have to, you know, do we, we've got to mention them early, but then you need to explain them. So do we mention them, then explain them? Do we put the explanation down? So so we had a few cuts at that chapter and, um, and I, I really love the craft of writing because, because that's where we can really add value. Um, if you're really embedded down in the weeds and you're doing it every day, working with the system every day, it's difficult to kind of step apart, look at how best to present that information in a logical manner so that a, a newcomer can absorb it and digest it um, and hopefully, you know, take on board what we're trying to say. Did I explain that very yeah, well? Yeah, because <laughs> and at that point, at that point, and in chapter three, you, what you're really describing is the, the chicken and egg problem. You need to know a thing to do a thing. And to do that thing, you need to know a thing. And eventually, it just mm -hmm. makes a circle. And so um, mm. you have to dive in somewhere and go. And, and we, what is chapter yes. three? We talk about like a spiral approach. You can actually, it's it's a, an approach to creating curriculum as well. You think Chapter three <laughs> is building and extending your first site. I mean, certainly no, like, no, no, no Jen. No. Chapter what? three is. <laughs> Am I looking at the wrong table of cards? That's God three. Wrong <laughs> that's the other book, Jam. No, it's building and extending. That that's. Oh, it is my mistake. Sorry, Jam. Ah. <laughs> building and extending. Were you talking about designing and planning, Felicity? No, I was talking about building it. So we're talking about the system layers. We're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, it's got this bird's eye view. So we're, we're talking about some of those bigger concepts that are that are unique to Typo3, TypeScript, fluid templating, whatever else you want. Okay. okay, I'm jumping in here really quickly, just to remind everybody who loves free books that you can win one by filling out that form that I'm sending out on the chat that you're hopefully looking at right now. And after I do that, we actually have a question. Um, which seems fairly relevant to the entire conversation, which is, again, from Poogers. <laughs> I'm doing that on purpose, I admit. It, uh, I'm sorry, but what is a CMS guidebook? There we go. What is it? Well... Okay. Pull this apart. You answer, won't you? Yeah. So content management systems are a very popular tool for building what we now call digital experiences, uh, what we used to call websites, but you have information, you want to build community, you need to sell things. You need to put that information online and connect it to, um, you know, logistics of moving things around the world or people buying subscriptions to products or whatever it is. And content management systems do that. And there are lots of them that are popular. And Typo3 is written in the most popular open source language for that, which is PHP and um, very standard debates and so on. So that's a CMS. And then a guidebook to a CMS is, um, it's not quite technical documentation all the way through, and it's not a general knowledge book either. We wanted to open the doors. We wanted to say, if you roughly know that you want to communicate on the web, you want a career in this, you want to adopt a tool for your agency, you want to understand how to manage your projects better, all of those things are very relevant. Um, we can open a bunch of doors to show you how to go in there. And half of our book, a third of our book, 60% of our book is going to be relevant to you in your use case, um, depending on what it is that you want to do. And maybe all of it, if you want to work at an agency as a developer and, and understand the business side, then we've probably got all the bases covered for you. So it provides a number of paths and significant chunks of information for a lot of different people who would have cause to touch a content management system in a lot of different uh, contexts. 
Thank you. And hopefully that cleared the question up for P ogres. So what <laughs> cool is ogres. big what's big <laughs> for typo three in 2021? Do you guys know? Are you privy to that yeah. uh, big information? The version 11 uh, release cycle starts now. And what's going to be nice is uh, for us from the book, from the book's perspective is the book is written to get these timeless concepts. And we consider a lot of the procedures like, you know, what, what's really going to change. Certainly for version 11, the big push is accessibility, usability, and also improved developer experience with just making the upgrades really smooth and easy. So even if you you know, watch that cycle go on. Um, and again, they always release on time. It's so fantastic to see the sprint releases come out very easy to understand the benefits of each of these changes. And so you'll be able to take what you learn in the book and easily upgrade it to the next version. And I think, you know, Typo 3 community is unusual in that sense in, in terms of their backward compatibility promise of which some other CMSs don't have um, and e long long term maintainability. So that's nice. So the community in 2021, apart from um, maintaining uh, the sort of type of three, does really well at long-term installations and, and long-term value. Um, the community is practicing a lot of outreach and making a lot of other efforts to onboard new users and new new stakeholders easily. And the book is part of a concentrated marketing and, and mentoring and teaching and learning effort that's going on in a lot of places. So um, there, there is, um, you know, there's, there are, um, there's outreach, um, there's enablement of, you know, a, a young women's coding learning organization in South Africa. The Rwandan government runs a bunch of typo three and the association sent people down there. There's a lot going on in Eastern Europe. There's things going on in India. So, so, bringing this system to new parts of the world that can be helped by an open source is is a big topic in 2021. Martin Bless, there is an ebook edition as of Sunday when everyone can order the book. Classic Treeware on paper, also an ebook edition. Um, yes, get it for your Kindle. Please buy it on order Sunday. Sunday. Order it on Sunday. Order it on Sunday. Buy it on Sunday. <laughs> So we did have one more question come in, and that was the difference between a CMS and a CRM. So I'll take a, a stab at that. Uh, CRM is a, a, a constituent relationship management tool or customer relationship man, man, management tool. Anyway, the C is the um, the placeholder for people relations, right? So it's to uh, manage the relationships that you have with people, Salesforce being the biggest example of maybe one of these. Um, whereas a content management relationship is for uh, managing content. If, if you want a website and you have some content, you need a system. Nobody? Okay. Sorry. Don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> your Insider do joke. That. <laughs> Insider joke. But anyway, the, the, the top level um, primitive object in a, a CMS, a content management system, is content. It's like text or images or files. Whereas the top level primitive of a CRM is a, an entity, a person, really, a contact. Maybe it's contact relationship. So just to answer that question uh, right off. So we are coming up to the top of the hour. Uh, if you haven't um, filled out the form to win your free Typo3 guidebook, the topic of this entire call, the link is in the chat. Please do fill it out because uh, I'm going to close that poll or that form after the show. So you're going to miss your chance if you haven't done it already. And if you want to make sure I give away enough of these books, please do subscribe to the channel because that increases the volume of books that I'm willing to give away. It's mm -hmm. tit for tat. Um, and Jam, Felicity, Heather, thank you so much for coming on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Anything uh, that you'd like to plug? Any Anything that you'd like to say to the audience as we leave 2020? Oh, please, please. If 2020 doesn't have anything more up its sleeve, I would just, it, I, I want to get out of this year safe and healthy and oh, right yes and please order our, our book yeah. i would say to say thank you so much to the typo three community i hope when they hold it in their hands and see that they'll feel like it's something that they all uh contribute to and it reflects um their thinking and uh yeah we really we're letting it go out in the world and wishing all the best for it and the and the project 
Anything to add, Felicity? Oh, uh, just that, you know, people will remember 2020, but I'll think of it as my book year. Yep. Nice. <laughs> it was a... It was a it was a it was a real privilege to be able to to channel the knowledge and experience of such a great bunch of friends and colleagues and and it's it's there's been a lot of work and a lot of struggle and a lot of learning and a lot of joy and um, I'm really glad Rob that you could also remind us to find the joy in it too because because it's it's been a long road but the um you know the the type of three community has been fantastic and um, we're we're really um, proud to be part of that. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and hey, Olivier, we see you. We love you. Aww. I was just thinking about Olivier. He's a, a, like a warm presence in the community. He's the president of the Typo 3 Association. And um, and, he, and he just commented to the podcast listeners who are very confused right now. All right. <laughs> Thanks, go. everybody. I'm ending the broadcast. This has been great. Have a great end of the year. See you next year on Deploy Friday. Have a good Bye. slide. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs>